Hello, my friends. I'm Pastor Doug, and I'm just really glad this afternoon to be able to visit with you. Uh, I'd like to update you on my sister. Uh, today, I can tell you that Terry has completed her chemo treatments and now is in that time of recovery and renewing of strength. She's been really blessed to be working with an amazing oncology team, and uh, they've been with her every step of the way. And I think what Terry has been really impressed by is how gracious they've been and how encouraging they've been through the treatments and, and her surgery. We certainly are grateful for all that they've done on her behalf, and we also want to convey our thanks to you for your prayers. Uh, say We just ask that you would continue to keep her in prayers, uh, that she might just get back to full strength here and uh, be able to enjoy some normal routines of daily life. I want to reflect on these words from uh, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This Sunday, we're going to take a look at what is often called the love, love chapter or 1 Corinthians 13. I'm really excited because we're just going to take a look at this and see what a godlike love should look like. And we're also going to hear from two people from our congregation that are going to share for them what love is for them. What I'd like to do today is for us to take a look on this subject too, to look at three words that, that Paul uses to characterize love. And then I just want to share my own witness and answer for me what love is. So the three words that Paul, three of the words that Paul uses to characterize love. Love is patient. My friends, I'm going to be real today. Love as patient isn't always something we see in our culture. I think as Christians, it's so important for us to model patience with others. Our society can be so impatient with others. And you don't have to go far to see this. One only needs to go for groceries and see how short some clerks are treated. Or go out to eat and see how the wait staff is treated. Or unfortunately, see how bad family can, tr can treat one another sometimes. God-like love for me is exemplified in the teaching profession. I see it here at the Wesley Preschool and see it in our teachers. They, they are so good as they share a lesson they correct a student or they guide a restless student back to the task of the moment. They abound with compassion and love as they help that student to grow in understanding and to develop socially. So I, I, my kudos to teachers of all ages as they remind us by their example that love is patient. Secondly, love is kind. Love is kind, not just to our friends, but to everyone. You know, Dee and I try to practice this in some very simple ways. Dee and I try to always remember to thank any clerk who helps us, to compliment a wait staff for a job well done, and try to greet and, and smile uh, at folks that we see along our way. You know, and it goes even beyond that. Kindness is is taking time to lend a helping hand or listening ear to someone who's having a tough day. Kindness is offering a word of, a, or of encouragement or help rather than criticism. I think I really see our daughter Anne live this out well. When her, when her children are going through a tough time, um, she'll be very quick to uh, encourage them uh, if they've had a bad game or a tough day at school and she'll offer a word of, of, of encouragement saying well you know today wasn't great but you know I know you're going to do better you know that next time's going to go better for you or I think you're improving and I think next time's going to even better 
she finds ways to encourage and, and, and um, offer support rather than criticizing. So we need to remember that, that love is patient, love is kind, and third, love is not rude. It's hard to see, but some folks seem too quick to bluntly point out a mistake or perceived slight and do it under the guise of just telling the truth. My dad taught me my, by, by word and example, there's always a nice way to talk to others, especially if you know it'll be hard for them to hear. I've heard Amy Whitworth say it this way. She talks about making a sandwich. And she says, you know, if you have something hard to share with someone, first of all, you tell them something good. Then you share with them the issue that, that needs to be addressed. And then you wrap up your conversation, again, reminding them of something good that they do. Christians, we can help our culture by modeling courtesy, tact, and politeness, and, and doing these things on a regular basis, and letting that rub off on other people. Today, we just need to remind ourselves that love is not rude. So these three characteristics of love, when practiced faithfully, can really make a difference in, in our group, our circle of people. Um, let's make sure that we are practicing these things in our workplace, our home life and community. Love is patient, kind, and not rude. Let's make sure that is embodied in our lives each and every day. I wanna wrap up this brief devotion with you by sharing a personal example of how I have experienced love in my life. And I wanna say that love is selfless. And I saw that lived out in my dad's life. When I was growing up, my dad was both a full-time student and he worked full-time. So that meant he got up early and he stayed up late at night to do his studies. But dad would take time to make breakfast for my sister and me. He would take time to pick us up from school when the weather was bad. And he always would make time to attend all our concerts and recitals. I noticed, but didn't always understand right away, that dad's clothing seemed to be really old. But as I grew up, I understood that he would have mother mend his clothes so that they could buy new clothes for us. Dad liked to eat out, but I would always hear him ask mother where she wanted to go. And you know what? That's where they went. Dad consistently modeled for me putting the needs and the good of others ahead of himself with our family and in his ministry. Dad taught me that love is selfless. Think about your life. And I challenge you to consider how you would complete this phrase, love is. Well, that's that's for it for the devotion today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, let's think about how we can embody love in practice and in word. Amen. Well, I've got some things to share with you today. Uh, actually, three things. And uh, let's just take a quick look at that. Uh, Mom to Mom's next meeting is the Wednesday, February 2nd. Uh, they gather from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, they're getting a great crowd out and really building a, a wonderful community with these mothers. I think being a mom is hard, and it's really nice that this is a place that they can connect with others, um, share uh, some of their common struggles, but also share their proud moments, their joyful moments. It's a great way that they can treat themselves uh, to some free girl time, and um, also their children have fun connecting with other kids, learning new things, and having fun. So uh, we certainly want to invite the mothers uh, in the community um, in our congregation to join us uh, next Wednesday evening from Mom to Moms. I uh, want to be sharing, and we'll talk again on Sunday about this opportunity, but we're going to have a really special service on February 13th that focuses on the faces of love. And this service is going to conclude with the opportunity for couples to come forward and renew their wedding vows. There will be a reception following the service, and we'll even have a wedding cake. So I want to invite you now to be thinking about this and discussing it with your spouse and see if that might be something you want to take advantage of on February 13th. And finally, our adult Sunday school class continues to meet. Uh, we use um, Zoom to gather at 1045 each Sunday. Uh, 
hey, use videos and have a time for discussion. And we're getting ready to wrap up Andy Stanley's uh, study titled uh, Me and My Big Mouth. And then we'll be beginning a new study next Sunday. And I'll have more information about that next week. Jeff Miller leads a great class. And um, all you need to do is either talk to him or contact the office. And we'll add you to the Zoom invite list. I really hope you would consider joining this fun class. Well, I'd like to close our time with a word of prayer. And uh, it's been good visiting with you today. Let us pray. Loving God, you are so patient with us. You never, ever give up on us. You are so selfless and you gave your son so that our sins might be forgiven. Help us to love more like you and to demonstrate a love that is patient, kind, and not rude. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for visiting with me. Let's talk again soon, and may the peace of God be with you. Stay strong and stay safe.